Hello guys, this is the Polyglot Programmer and on this video we're going to look at 5 Godot tips in just 5 minutes. So let's begin. The first one that we're going to look is how to undock the script editor. Right, so a lot of times when you're working with Godot, you have two monitors and you have, need to keep switching between your script view and 2D view and that's if you're not using another uh, visual scripting editor like VS Code or, or whatnot. But if you want to keep using Godot, uh, Ever since Godot 4.1, we have a very useful feature which is right here on the script. And you have this little icon here that says Make Script Editor Floating. And you click here and there you go. You can move this into your other screen like I just did. Or you can keep it here. You can do whatever you want. And once you want to go back, you just close it and you click here. The script is docked again. All right. For the second tip, we're going to look at static functions in GDScript. And a static function is, is a basically a member function of a class, or a function that is inside of a class, that can be called even when an object is not initialized. This means that you actually do not need to have an instance of a class to access static methods. And we're going to look at that right now. So here I have a my player with an empty class basically and I created another file here which is called my math library and I give the name my math library and here I created a static function just by adding a static keyword in front of it right and this function is called sum it takes two arguments both int and returns an int a plus b so now inside my player I'm actually going to access this here right and I'm just going to say print uh, my math library sum you can see the function right here I'm gonna say two plus four and I'm gonna add just uh, sum in here right and if we run this we look at the console here we go six so here we're actually accessing the sum method without actually having to create an object of the type my math library and that's static functions on the dope. The next thing that we're going to look at is subclasses in GDScript. GDScript does not have the concept of structs. So one of the options that you have when you actually want to create a custom data type or something like a struct in GDScript is to actually use a subclass. To use a subclass uh, inside of a class where you have already declare you can you just do just use the word the the, the keyword class and you say um, my data for example the name of my class or struct or whatever and let's let's say age and name so here we define a type of my data which is a subclass of player and here I can define bar, um, call it me my data right and you initialize just like you would initialize a class right there you go so now you can come in here and say for example me dot name equals Josh age equals 30 right and um, just like any other value you can manipulate it just like any other value right so you can just say name uh, me dot name print age run this there you go you have uh, a data structure that you created which is a ch which is part of um, uh, uh, a, a class which is called player and it, of course is not a one-to-one -one, but it, you can replace some functionalities that you have with structs in other programming language the next topic is auto load or the equivalent of singletons in Godot which, by the way, I do have a video that goes in depth into auto load, which I highly recommend that you take, take a look. But auto load basically works like a singleton where you declare a cl class 
The only difference is that you do not have to, to add a class name here. You, you can declare signals, functions, methods, anything you want, variables. Um, and you go to project settings, auto load tab, come in here, global. Uh, you give it a name, you add it, don't forget to add it. Close, and from that point, point on, you have a, a global instance of that class in here that you can access and then you are in your project again don't forget to check the video that i have that talks about auto load singletons and last but not least is the use of the print t built-in function which you may have noticed that i have been using here the reason that i like to use this is that you don't have to to use the you don't have to concatenate uh, strings in here. You just add a comma and whatever values and another comma and whatever values. And this adds the tab between the values that you have in here. And it's, it's very, very useful. So that's all for the tips for today, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time.